Welcome to this, our second program that look at pH calculations. Here I have a table out of our IV data booklet that deals with what we call weak carboxylic acids. We can see the name of the acid, its formula, and something called the pKa. pKa, by definition, is the negative log of the acid ionization constant. Now let's take a look at what that means. For the first case, methanoic acid, we can view that as dissociating and forming hydrogen ions and its conjugate base. This has an equilibrium constant associated with it. That constant is called the Ka value. So the Ka for this particular reaction would be the concentration of H plus times the concentration of its conjugate base over the original concentration of the acid. Now, this particular value is very small for this reaction. In fact, if I take this value, I can now convert this into the equilibrium constant. So this being the negative log of Ka, that means that this has an equilibrium constant of 10 to the negative 3.75. If I take that and convert that then into a, an actual number, um, it's 0 0.00018. A very small constant, suggesting that the majority of the substance will remain in this form and there will only be a very few ions present. You might recall that from our definition of a weak acid. It turns out that the bigger the Ka value, the pKa value, the smaller the equilibrium constant. So for instance, this one, the equilibrium constant for this reaction would be 10 to the negative 7 point, negative 4.76. For this one, it would be 10 to the negative 4 point eight seven moving on down here ten to the negative five point zero three so you can see the larger this value becomes the smaller the value of the equilibrium constant so that's worth noting as pKa goes up in value the equilibrium constant for the reaction actually becomes a smaller value so the larger the pKa the weaker your acid is. Let's use this now in a pH calculation. I'd like to determine the pH of a 0.1 molar solution of benzoic acid. So here I have benzoic acid right here. Let's write out the reaction for it. C6H5COOH. It's going to dissociate into H plus and its conjugate base, C6H5COO minus. Now, I'll quickly set up our ice table for this. So we start with 0 0.100, 0, none of this, none of this. This is going to go down by x. These will both go up by x. And I'll have 0 0.100 0 minus x and x, and x. Benzoic acid's equilibrium constant would be 10 to the negative 4.2. You might recall there's a shortcut we can apply when we have small values like 10 to the minus 4 and smaller, and it deals with this equilibrium concentration. We can say that that is roughly the same as 0 0.100, because x, the amount of product, will be very small. That'll make it a little bit easier then when we solve this. So our equilibrium constant will be the hydrogen ion times its conjugate base of our benzoic acid over our equilibrium concentration of benzoic acid. Putting in our values. 
10 to the negative 4.2 for the equilibrium constant. Again, I'm getting that by converting this 10 to the negative. And this will be x. This will be x. And 0 0.10 on the bottom. This is the same as 10 to the negative 1. So when I multiply this here, this now becomes 10 to the negative 5.2 is equal to x squared. Now, if I take the square root of both sides, that's the same as dividing the exponent by 2, I get that x, which is the concentration of the hydrogen ion, will be 10 to the negative 2.6, which means my pH will be 2.6. You can see here the use of logs is very useful in solving these problems because at no time did I really have to reach for my calculator and I was yet able to arrive at this value. So the use of negative logs and pKa, pH, pOH values are very useful in these sorts of problems. Let's look at now the concept of Kb, the, bat, the base dissociation. Let's start with the second substance in the list, because we're very familiar with ammonia. So let's take a look at this methyl amine. So we have CH3, NH2, reacts with water to produce OH ions and its conjugate acid, CH3, NH3 positive. So what's happening here is the hydrogen is donating a proton to this substance and creating the OH ion. Let's set up the ice table for this reaction. And again, I'm going to start with a 0.1 molar solution. The concentration of water in water, you might recall, was 56 and none of this and none of this. So these have only one direction to go and that's up. So it must be at the expense of these substances. So we have 0 0.100 minus x, 56 minus x, and x and x. Now, we would say the equilibrium constant then for this reaction would be OH minus CH3 NH3 plus and on the bottom and water. Now as before the concentration of water is going to essentially remain unchanged. These values are very small values. Just like for the pKa value, that means the equilibrium constant for this particular reaction might be in the order of 10 to the negative 3.34. So 56 minus a very small amount means that this value essentially is going to remain the same. So we can replace this with a 56. Because it's a constant, we can combine these two constants and come up with the base dissociation constant, which then is just the concentration of these species So, just like in, in our ionization constant for water, we remove water from the equation by combining it with the equilibrium constant to define what we call our base dissociation constant. Now, let's put in some of our values here. We're going to have x and x from up here in our table. Again, we're going to employ the shortcut. 0.1 minus x is approximately 0.1 on the bottom. and our Kb value, 10 to the negative 3.34. Like before, this is 10 to the negative 1. 
So I can continue that, and I think we'll continue that over here. So 10 to the minus 1 times that gives me 10 to the negative 4.34 equaling x squared. Taking the square root of both sides then gives me x, which is the concentration of the olite chion as being 10 to the negative roughly 2.2. That then can give me what the pOH is. It would simply be 2.2. Now, how do we get the pH from that? Well, we can go back to the relationship we developed in the previous program, pH plus pOH equals 14. So then pH would be 14 less the 2.2, which gives me a pH value of somewhere around uh, 11.8, meaning the concentration then of the H plus ion would be 10 to the negative 11.8, considerably smaller than the concentration of my OH ion. So we can see here why this solution would be basic. Now, let's look at how we can put the acid cons, um, constant, dissociation constant, and the base dissociation constant together. For this, I'm going to return back to my original methanoic acid. And this was its formula. We know that this can break apart and form H+. Plus and COO minus. We know the equilibrium constant for this particular reaction then is this. Now, this substance is the acid. It donates that H plus, sorry, this one, to a water molecule. In the reverse direction, this substance acts as a base. This substance will accept the H+. This forms a conjugate acid-base pair. Now, this base has the capability of reacting with water molecules in this fashion. So, if I brought along a water, the H could be given to this base and that would then result in the formation of the hydroxide ion and back to the original acid. The Kb for this, you can recall, we leave out water because it's a constant and is equal to this. Now, Let's look at what happens if we put these two expressions together. Ka times Kb. So, let's write them out. So there's Ka. And there's Kb. I can see the concentration of the base, both on top and bottom, as, as well as the weak acid itself, leaving me just these two. And you might recall, those two when multiplied together, they equal Kw. What this shows, then, is as an acid Ka value goes up, so if Ka goes up, that would favor making a strong acid. That means the corresponding reaction of the base must get weaker. And vice versa. If we have a weak acid where Ka goes down, Kb must go up. 
they are inverse to each other in order to maintain the fact that they must multiply together to give us this. If we take the negative log of both sides, well, then we get the concept that pKa plus pKb must equal pKw, which is just another form of the very same equation except using the concepts of negative log. Let's say we have two acids here, methanoic and ethanoic, and the question we're asked is which is the stronger conjugate base? Well, if this is the pKa value, we should be able to figure out the pKb value. So those two together we know must total up to 14. So that would make this 10.25. Similarly, we know the total here has to be 14, so this must be 9.24. This means that Kb would be 10 to the negative 10.25. And the equilibrium constant for this one's base would be 10 to the negative 9.24. This value is smaller. Therefore, this would be the weaker base, and this down here would constitute the stronger base. So that finishes our look at pH calculations. In our next program, we'll take a look at buffer solutions.